And that posting said you have 18 summers with your kids. 18 summers. And when you think about it that way, that's not a lot. Yep. You read the title correctly. My name is Nico, and I'm here with Our Brown Farmhouse, AKA the Brown Family Farm. So you probably wanna know a little bit more about what I'm talking about. So come along with me and I'll walk you through where I am in this chapter of my life and why the video was titled that. It may not be as straightforward as it appears. So if you're one of our family members, that's what we love to call our subscribers. If you're one of our family members who are here because you love our content, thank you and welcome to another upload. If this is your first time watching one of our videos, please consider subscribing. So what we're gonna do today is our evening chores. But we're gonna mix it up a little. As we go through those evening chores, gonna speak a little bit more about exactly what I'm referring to and what I'm getting at here. So come along, let's get to it. All right, y'all, so we've been out and about all day, so Sahara's in there with Nana, Mama's taking a nap, Baby Pharaoh's taking a nap, but maybe we could check on them later. But just gonna get our evening chores started. And this is our oldest daughter, what's your name? Egypt. Egypt, Egypt what? Rose. Egypt Rose, yeah. So, as we go through our chores, I'm not gonna explain what we're doing. I'll probably just put up on the screen what we're doing for those that maybe just happened upon this video and have no idea what farm chores or homestead chores are. So, I've been in my career for a total of 12 years. And I get it. There could be people watching the video right now that are retired or nearing retirement or just have been in their career field or just working for longer than that. So I promise you this isn't some millennial rant. Here, big boy back there. So like most Americans, or I would like to think most Americans, I've been in what I call the hamster wheel for those 12 years, chasing titles, chasing promotions, chasing more money. And 2023 was an interesting year for me. When, when this year started for year 12, heading towards year 13, I made a resolution and my resolution was that for the first time in my career, the first time I was gonna put my family before work. I've traveled a lot, been away from home a lot. Um, I'm salary, so I'm paid for 40, but not abnormal for me to work 50 or more hours a week. Working while I'm at home, answering phone calls, text messages, emails, making myself available no matter what I was doing with my family. Missing important moments that I now know I can't get back. And in 2023, this year, something changed. And I still can't really put my finger on it. I think it was Natalie being pregnant with our third child, our baby boy, Pharaoh if I had to choose something, but I wanted to take a step back and refocus on how I was spending my time. <laughs> I spilled water on her. And for me in my life, this was a recent revelation because just as recently as 2022, last year, I was still super duper invested into the hamster wheel chasing promotions, chasing money. In fact, I, I applied for four 
director level, executive level roles with my current employer last year because I was chasing that hard. And I learned a lot last year. Okay. Good job, these are bros. Thank you. Okay. Turn the water off. Let's fast forward to 2023 after in 2022, still chasing. And Natalie's pregnant with baby Pharaoh. Of course, we already have our daughters, Egypt and Sahara. And I'm still trying to figure things out professionally, but what does change for me is I know that I wanna put a focus on my family first in 2023 and not my corporate job. So I speak with my boss and we make arrangements to essentially make that a reality. And I take a step back in a lot of my responsibilities and a lot of the things I do day to day so that I can just focus on my job by title. And that was a hard decision. Remember, 12 years in the hamster wheel. Imagine you're chasing, chasing, chasing. You have a reputation and you're known for being a certain way, showing up a certain way, and just being a hungry go-getter. Now, I'm still hungry and I'm a go-getter, but my plate doesn't have as much on it. And that was a weird feeling for me. And I realized in the way others interacted with me, it was a weird feeling for them as well. What do I get in that? The average American is an employee and we are taught just about since birth that we are supposed to work a nine to five and we trade our time for money. Hey, blank company, I agree to work for you. So you sign your offer letter, you sign your contract, you sign the paperwork they give you when you get the job, right? Hey, blank company, I agreed to trade my time for X amount of dollars an hour or X amount of dollars a year. And for the average American, with the average American financial mindset, we work our whole lives, essentially, to retirement, 65, 55, whatever age you're able to retire at, working towards retirement, chasing that carrot. And it was in December, heading into the new year for my resolution where I said, you know, something has to give, something has to change. I heard a interesting quote that I would like to share with you. And this gentleman spoke to how the biggest lie that Americans have been sold, and I say Americans because the majority of us are the working class, is that we do trade our time for money. And the saying that we all know because we've heard it our whole life is that time is, that's right. Whether you said it out loud or you said it in your head, you finished my sentence for me. That proves the point. We've heard it our whole life. Time is money. Well, is it really? The quote slash example he gave was around proving whether or not time is money. I know some of you like the sound of water, so we're going to let this fill for the goslings. Now, the average American goes to their nine to five. They work two weeks. They get paid. You get your paycheck. You pay your water bill, your electric bill, your cell phone bill, your car note, your mortgage or your rent and whatever other obligations you have. Right. And a little bit of money you may have left over, maybe you treat yourself to a movie or go out on a date with your significant other or 
do things that you need to do for your kids or go grocery shopping, what's left? So on Friday, you're like, whoo, payday. And by Monday, you're already like, ah. Because that money goes fast, especially in today's economy, right? You're on the, you're on the clock again for two weeks just so you could get that high. And we repeat that process, most of us, our entire lives. But he gave an example that I really, really like. And it was around the mindset of people who keep and create money versus the average American, the consumer, the, the average American who spends more than they make in order to maintain a lifestyle that they don't really even care about. It's to impress others, right? His analogy, and I'm gonna relate it to homesteading and farming, right? Because that's what we do here. His analogy was around having his money make him more money. And he, he, he says he likes his money to get pregnant and that the money he brings in, every dollar that hits his bank account, those are his mamas. And he wants to get his mamas pregnant. So let's relate that to farming so it can make a little bit more sense for us. So imagine that each dollar you make is a collard green plant. And on payday, it's nice and ready for harvest. And you take the whole plant out the ground and eat it. Well, now the whole plant is gone, right? So you have to replant it, love and care for it, keep the weeds away, let it grow again, just so you can have some more collard greens to eat. And let's just say, for the sake of this example, it takes two weeks for that to happen. Well, now you have another collard green, but what does the average American do? Two weeks later, they'll take that whole plant out the ground again and do it all over. That's not allowing your money to work for itself, right? Now imagine that every payday, instead of taking the whole plant out the ground, you just cut off the leaves that are ready to harvest. Well, days later, you'll have more leaves that you can harvest again. And then days later, you'll have more leaves that you can harvest again, all from that one plant. Each leaf is a child from the mama plant. And that mama plant was the original dollar, the original money you had, right? Make your money work for itself. How can your money produce more money? That's the chapter of my life I'm in, and I really feel like if we can master that, then I can buy my time back. And I think the reason this is so important to me right now is because something else I read while going down a rabbit hole on social media, and there's a good chance that if this is your first time ever watching one of our videos, you're in a rabbit hole right now, <laughs> yourself. And that posting said you have 18 summers with your kids. 18 summers. And when you think about it that way, that's not a lot, right? Well, Egypt's already nine. The clock's ticking. Sahara's four, right? In a perfect world, we'll have more than 18 summers with them. But by, uh, uh, by tradition in America, at least, in a lot of our culture, the kids leave the house at 18. But I tell Egypt all the time that I wouldn't mind if they stayed forever. And hopefully one day she finds this video and holds me to it. Like, look, dad, you said I don't have to move out. And I would be okay with that. <laughs> I would be okay with that. But 18 of anything isn't a lot. $18, it's not a lot. 18 pieces of Lay's potato chips, <laughs> right? It's not a lot. You'll be like, man, where's the rest of my snack? I'm at a chapter of my life where I want to figure out how I can get out of the hamster wheel or at least slow down my running pace in that hamster wheel. And I just don't believe, and Natalie also doesn't believe, that that's something that happens at 
55 plus. Who says it can't happen now? So how can we make our money stretch further? Well, for one, as many of you know, we've done Dave Ramsey and we do a decent job of sticking to those teachings. And it's the same thing you can learn from the richest man in Babylon, an amazing book, which essentially is Dave Ramsey before Dave Ramsey. And when you break it all down, all Dave Ramsey really is teaching is the things that your grandma and great grandma told you about money anyway. That's the main thing, y'all. We wanna figure out how I can take a step back at work to have more time with the girls and, and more time with the family and more time doing this because this is what I love. I think we've all heard the saying that if you do something you love, then you'll never work a day in your life. And I believe that's true. Um, I truly believe that's true because when I'm out here with the girls and the animals, it doesn't feel like work. Natalie's on me all the time because I could be up here from sun up to sun down. And at the end of the day, I'm actually like, man, it's the end of the day, like I need more sunlight. I don't even notice that we've been outside all day. I'm having fun, doesn't feel like work. So this is something that I would love to do full time. So, about to get our eggs, y'all, as you can see. Here's one, Egypt, all the way over here. Dang. There's one. Any more? Not that I could see. So, I just really wanna create memories and spend time with the girls as much as I can because I know that this isn't forever. One day is just gonna, well, there's a chance that one day it's just gonna be Natalie and I collecting eggs. And maybe Egypt will help, will you help? Even if you're an adult, Egypt? Yeah. All right, it's on camera. <laughs> Man, this is good. We have a good amount today. Mm-hmm. We can make eggs for breakfast tomorrow. <laughs> Go show mama what we got. Some yummy eggs. Yeah. All right, let's go. So, I want as much time as I could possibly get with, with the family. And I don't know, I just also think to myself, right now I'm trading my time to work for a company, but when I do quote unquote retire, or when I am ready to walk away, I can't pass that on to my, I can't pass that on to my family, to my children and create a legacy for them. Someone else already owns that company, right? Natalie and I want to create something for our children that we could pass on to them and they could pass on to our grandchildren and our grandchildren to, grandchildren to theirs. So that's the chapter we're in right now. So that's where we are, y'all. Natalie and I are trying to figure out how we can get more time with the girls and primarily me. And here's mama. She is out here, y'all. <laughs> But primarily me because mom is an extrovert and what fills her bucket are social interactions. So going out to the workplace and interacting with her team and interacting with, you know, the people she has to interact with through her, her job or career, that's what brings her happiness. That's what fills her bucket. So we, we have different wants at this time and that's okay. So, let me tell you what I'm getting at with the title of my video. Why I left my job. Well, as many of you know, we just had our youngest child. So, mama's been on maternity leave since April 15th, when baby Pharaoh was born. <laughs> there you go spread it out for them and then we'll back up so they can enjoy it Taylor. and she's about to go back to work 
and our plan has been this entire time that she was going to go out first and then we were going to tag each other in and out so that we can make it as long as we possibly can without having to put baby Pharaoh in daycare because both of us work off of the homestead. Our mother-in-law who lives with us, she works off of the homestead as well. With Sahara, we were almost able to make it to, well, past two years old, right? So in an ideal world, we can make it as long as possible without having to put baby Pharaoh in daycare and that's our plan. So I'm about to go on paternity leave for the next three months. And this is a great time because I feel like I'm gonna get a little bit of an example of what life could be like if I was able to do this full time. So be with the kids, pick them up from school, well, drop them off to school, pick them up from school, activities, um, family events and family vacations, and just being here on the homestead full time um, and, and bringing it to life and having the time to accomplish all of the projects that we know that we wanna accomplish to continue to beautify this property. So I'm very excited about that. And during this time, I'm also gonna be putting a focus on growing what we have going on our homestead, which is all of these beautiful animals and figuring out a way to create a living here on the homestead whether it's selling eggs and that's not going to pay the bills but that's a stream of income we are about to begin planning out and mapping out and the starts on our fall garden so selling produce at farmers markets selling goat kids right we can't keep them all growing our herd there's so many different ideas that natalie and i have so over the next three months y'all I'm going to be racking my brain trying to figure out how we could bring that to life. <laughs> and Sahara's in the middle of the yard. That's funny. So yeah, going to be figuring out how we could bring this to life, y'all. So Egypt and I are now inside of Graceland. And we have Elvis on the right and Priscilla on the left. But am I, am I crazy, y'all? for wanting to figure this out, especially this quote unquote early in life? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> there you go, Priscilla and Elvis. Get up there, are y'all about to get on your swing? And y'all know we have to get a beautiful Florida sunset for you. And you see our guy Thor right there. <laughs> he was just with the girls, or actually, it's probably more fair to say the girls were just with him. They moved, he didn't. He's still right there on that fence line. But how cute is that, y'all? <laughs> As you can see, the girls have moved a little further down. They're all about to lie down right there. So I'm sure he'll join them pretty soon here, but for now he sees Achilles. <laughs> That's hilarious. So just had to get a little bit of Thor for everyone because I know there's so many of you following his journey. But as you can see, he is doing amazing. Hey buddy, hey. You see, he's still a happy baby. And he loves spending time with his girls, y'all. He loves it. He's learning. But, you know, it's in his blood. And look at Carol chewing on her cud. <laughs> and that's her mama. And her name is Mama Goat. So, yeah, y'all. That is what I am going to be trying to figure out and that is why I left work for paternity leave hey hey how's it going fancy pants butterscotch <laughs> so I'm very excited about this time 
because I'll finally see what it feels like to get my time back and really want to do all I can to make this a reality, make this the everyday for me so that I can better, in my mind, provide for my family because time is not money. I no longer believe that. So hopefully if you're watching this video over the next three months, you can be my accountability partner <laughs> as I traverse this and try to figure this all out. Hey, Thor. Hey, buddy. Hey, I know you wanted some loving. Hey, buddy. You're so sweet. So sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Voila. Good job, buddy. Are you hungry? Thirsty? No? You got Coming some water up? over there. Man, yep. you're doing so fast now. <laughs> Good job. All right, y'all. So I have three months. When I say three months, I mean to continue to build our homestead and the legacy we're trying to create for our children. That's something that we're really passionate about. So really hold me accountable to that. I also wanna say happy Labor Day to everyone watching this. Hope you have a wonderful holiday and we'll see y'all in our next upload. Peace.